Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. All the images used in this uh, clip are from Wiki Commons. They are in the public domain and copyright free. What you're looking at here is the Van Allen belts, and there's a date down in the corner, apparently, when uh, this map was made. And I'm going to put up some ancient text by ancient writers that talk about the dome of the sky, uh, the firmament of the sky, and in this case, uh, an inverted bowl that we call the sky. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because over time, uh, people began to question whether the astronauts could have made it through the Van Allen belt. And what I'm questioning is, could anything make it through the Van Allen belts? And the reason I'm doing this is because a friend of mine, and by the way, you may want to pause to read these uh, these ancient writings, um, the reason I'm doing it is a friend of mine sent me a, an article from MIT about a new discovery, which really, the more I thought about it, just started to poke holes in everything we've been told. And I'm going to go through that. Now, uh, the Van Allen belts were first discovered, and I think it's 59. I'll get to it in a minute. And we launched these probes. Here's the logo for the Van Allen probes. And uh, they went out in 2012. So from the first time we launched anything, we were looking at this problem. And all the way up to 2012, we're still launching probes to deal with the Van Allen belt problem. Now I'm going to go through a couple more images uh, that attempt to show what the Van Allen belt is. There's two of them. There's an inner belt and an outer belt. And I will show you a better diagram here. Here's another reference to a vaulted dome from an ancient writer. Uh, the Sumerians called it a solid vault, as you can see here. We'll wrap up with a couple more images, and then I'll get into it. Here's a Greek philosopher that referred to it as a felt cap, where the stars were fixed to it, to the surface, like nails. Talking about, you know, space here. And here's another one, dome-like covering, dome-shaped. A covering, comprehended matter, which was like a clod. So here is our first launch into space which came right after Sputnik but it was America's first successful launch and it had a satellite uh, and part of it was designed by Van Allen and what it did was it went up to look at the Van Allen belt problem and um, I'm going to get into this but first I'm going to cover the MIT discovery which further complicates everything we've been told here and I'll preface the conversation that we're about to have uh, by stating that I was a, a radio operator in the military and a cryptographer, so I know something about radio, and that's really what got me thinking here. So let's get into the MIT article real quick. Okay, so here is the MIT article, and I will put the link in the description of this clip if anyone wants to see it. As you can see, invisible plasma shield which protects Earth from radiation discovered 7,200 miles above the planet. So let's get down into uh, this article a little bit. There's just a couple things I want to pull out. You can go back and look at this if you want. Um, Earth is protected by from fast-moving killer electrons by an invisible plasma shield. Um, let me jump down here. There is a couple of lines I think are critical. Okay, here it is. It is almost like these electrons are running into a glass wall in space. And it goes on, but uh, what's interesting is it closes out by saying, it's like looking at a phenomenon with new eyes, with a new set of instrumentation, which gives us the detail to say, yes, there is a hard, fast boundary. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to map this thing out. It doesn't tell us how big or how wide it is, but it gives us enough information to look into um, some very important points and I'll get into that now. Okay so here is a diagram that I have made and keep in mind this is 2D. Um, from the other images that I've shown you you can see that it's a toroidal shape that we're presented with when they talk about these belts. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at this. But anyhow let's just go through the diagram really quickly and bear in mind every one of these belts is plasma and I'm going to cover what that means. So uh, we come into this green strip, this is low Earth orbit, and it is slightly overlapped by this area, which is the inner Van Allen belt. Okay, So low, low Earth orbit goes from 100 miles up to 1,240 miles, and interesting enough, some 
of the definitions of low Earth orbit start at sea level, which I thought was very interesting. All right, the inner Van Allen belt, which is this area here, uh, goes from 600 miles out to 3,700 miles, and then we get to the new MIT discovery, which is this pink band. And this is the glass wall, the hard and fast boundary at 7,200 miles, and this is plasma as well. Then we get to the outer Van Allen belt, which is all this area, and that stretches from 8,100 miles up to 37,300 miles and in the middle of this or roughly in in this band is geostationary orbit which is 22,236 miles roughly so we have satellites mostly in this green band but they're apparently we are told all in this area and many out here in geostationary and the fact is we have some that are listed out at 60,000 miles or uh, the SOHO, uh, which is like a million some miles out there. So that's what we're told. So when we consider that this is a plasma belt, this is this new glass wall plasma belt, and then this is a plasma belt, let's look into what plasma actually is so that we understand what we're talking about. Okay, so just to review, um, plasma from the ancient Greek means anything formed, or at least that's the wiki definition. Um, it is one of the four fundamental states of matter, the others being solid, liquid, and gas. So these belts, three of them now, including the new MIT discovery at 7,200 miles, are all plasma fields out there. And plasma is contained in electromagnetic fields. Um, that's one of the main ways it's contained. But what got me is, is when I was looking into plasma, I went to NASA to see what their definition was, and it says this. A plasma is sometimes referred to as being hot if it is nearly fully ionized or cold if only a small fraction, for example, 1% of the gas molecules are ionized. But other definitions of the terms hot plasma and cold plasma are common. Even in cold plasma, the electron temperature is still typically several thousand degrees Celsius. So what they're saying here is even the plasmas that are termed cold plasmas are several, several thousand degrees Celsius. And I'm going to cover two things here. I mean, could satellites, Apollo lunar modules, or anything go through these plasma fields? Um, and radio waves, because I was a radio operator, and I know for a fact uh, radio waves do not go well through plasma, and I will cover that. But let's look at several thousand degrees Celsius. First of all, steel melts at around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,371 Celsius. Um, that's one of the hotter things. The hottest thing I found was titanium, and its melting point is 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 1600 Celsius. So even if we took several thousand degrees to mean only 3000 degrees, um, titanium seems to be the one thing that could make it through. Gold is at 1900 Fahrenheit, silver 17, tin, we see all this tin foil shielding on all the uh, the space things were shown. Um, the melting point for tin is only 449 degrees Fahrenheit or 231 Celsius. So you can see the problem here. Um, it, if you consider that the oven in your kitchen goes up, you know, most ovens go what, around 500 degrees? Uh, you look at these things that were shown. If you put one of those in your oven, would it even make it through 500 degrees if it was left in there for an hour? But radio waves is really what got me thinking. As an ex-radio operator, I remember the training we used to do, bouncing radio waves off the ionosphere. Um, so I started looking into this. Um, there were some Russians um, that were working on this problem for the very reason of space objects communicating with radio waves back to Earth. But this definition really kind of stuck with me. Listen to this. The fact that the propagation of radio waves in complex media such as plasma is one of the most fundamentally difficult ones in electromagnetism. So there it is. They're stating flat out that getting a radio wave to propagate through plasma is the most difficult problem in electromagnetism. So there was a group of Russian physicists who were dealing with this and uh, I lifted this excerpt from their 
research, which really starts to put a nail in the coffin of whether or not we can go through these fields or even send a radio wave back. We've got a rover on Mars. How the hell are the radio waves from that, from that rover getting back to Earth? Listen to this. This is what the Russians said. A group of Russian phys physicists say that they can get around this problem by turning the entire plasma sheath into a radio antenna. That means a receiver, okay? They point out that any incoming signals is both reflected and absorbed by the plasma. The reflected signal is lost, but the absorbed energy sets up a resonating electric field at a certain depth within the plasma. In effect, this layer within the plasma acts like a radio antenna receiving the signal. Now here's the kicker. However, the signal cannot travel further through the plasma to the spacecraft. So there it is flat out. Russian physicists are telling you that when a radio wave hits plasma, part of it is reflected and that signal is lost, which I know from firsthand experience being a radio operator. Secondarily, they say that some of it is absorbed into the plasma, but it can't travel through the plasma to, in this example, a spacecraft. So how the heck are all these satellites, rovers, spaceships, sending radio signals through this plasma, and on top of that, how the heck are they going through fields that are 7, 000, several thousand degrees in temperature, and that's that's us assuming that this is cold plasma. If this is hot plasma, which I couldn't really find a definition of these bands um, to determine this, if it's hot plasma, it's much, much hotter. So these are the problems. So there is basically only one way um, I can fathom in my mind uh, crafts that we build actually dealing with the things we have talked about here today, these plasma belts, and that is magnetic fields. Magnetic fields can contain plasma, and I have shot a lot of objects like this thing you're looking at now, and I've always described them as having a magnetic-y looking halo. What if these are technology we've been never told about, um, and that is a magnetic bubble that this thing is in so that it can go out into deeper space? Um, the speed of this thing suggests that it's much further out than low Earth orbit, which would put it in these belts that we've been talking about, these plasma belts. Um, when you see footage like this, and, and I have shot many objects, this is just one of the best examples. That's a still that I took, by the way, where it jumps. Um, you see these kind of double halos where there's a core, an outer halo, and then an outer, outer halo, and they usually have a reddish hue. And I have wondered for a long time if these are technology um, that we've never been told about, because this is in perfect focus. Um, anyone who uses a scope will understand that something that's any distance from the scope, a mile or two away, um, something like that, and if the moon or the background is in focus, then this object is in focus too. So, you know, to sum up, if we just send metal craft out there, I've pretty much demonstrated that there's a lot of problems with what we've been told. If we try to communicate back to Earth with radio waves, um, there's a huge problem sending radio waves through plasma. The only thing that I can come up with is either we are totally being lied to and we are not beyond low Earth orbit, or the images that I just showed you or images like them are showing vehicles that have some kind of a magnetic bubble they travel in that allows them to go through the plasma fields in space. At any rate, uh, clip's getting on a bit, that's it. So there it is, the Van Allen belts and this new MIT glass shield in space. Cheers.